So I'm super excited. I have the pleasure of being here today with Dan Olette, uh, and Dan is running for Mill Creek Township Supervisor. Um, so thank you for being here. Pleasure to be here. So I was reviewing your resume uh, before, obviously, we met today, and you have an extensive amount of commitment to Mill Creek Township in, in ways of, of 38 plus years. So can you tell me a little bit about that and tell me a little bit about you? Sure. Um, well, first, I'll start off about me. Um, been raised in Mill Creek all my life. I'm a McDowell graduate, 1980. Uh, 1984, I graduated from the Erie County Paramedic Program. Um, been married for 32 years to my wife, Mary Ann. We have three sons. Uh, we have twins, Mark and Joe, who are 26 years old. And our youngest is Jacob, who's 23. Oh, wow. I've been with the Westridge Fire Department for, well, going on 39 years, coming up here in February. So you started um, when you were like five years old. <laughs> <laughs> You're so kind. Uh, no, actually, uh, 18. I joined when I was 18. I, it was one of those things that I couldn't wait to do when I turned 18, and, and I've been there ever since. You know, I've uh, risen up through the ranks of the fire service, uh, starting off, of course, as a firefighter, then becoming a lieutenant, a captain, assistant chief, and then eventually in um, 2005, I became the fire chief, a position I held until the first of this year. Nice. So, yeah. Nice. Very, uh, very proud of that accomplishment. It's awesome. Not a lot of people can say 38 plus years of, of community um, service, you know, and, and helping those uh, in the township. So we appreciate well, that. Thank you. Um, so tell me, well, what do you do for like a day job? Because don't you work for the township as well? I do work for the township. Um, I've been with the township also uh, for 32 years. Um, the first 20 years um, of my career with the township, which began in 1987, uh, I worked in uh, the police department in the communications division. So there we, when I started, we were dispatching both police and fire departments. Um, and then in 2007, I transferred to Public Works, where I currently work as an inspector uh, for Public Works. So anytime there's new construction, any underground plumbing uh, that has to be inspected, that's what I do. And not only that, but uh, I also work with the robotic cameras for underground um, inspections on um, sanitary sewer pipes, storm sewer pipes, um, anything that's confined space, we run the robot cameras through there. And I'm also involved in the township's inflow and infiltration program where we work to reduce the sanitary flows uh, going to the sewer treatment facility. So oh, it's, wow. a, it's a very busy. Uh, well, and with the volunteer fire uh, fighter experience and the um, township experience, I'm sure you see a lot of stuff day to day. Oh, yeah. And talk every, to a lot of people. Every day, yes. <laughs> um, well, out in the public every day in yeah. some fashion, whether it's with the fire department on an emergency call or, um, you know, working in my capacity uh, with the township. Awesome. That's fantastic. So what do you think are the um, biggest opportunity areas, if you will, for Mill Creek? Well, um, I think in my experience, uh, since I've been in public works, I, I see that... Um, our roads are probably the issues that potholes are. Yeah, you know, they they have the the most complaints. You know, any time that I've been out in public lately, it's you know when the residents come up to you, you see that you're working in the neighborhood. They want to know what's going on, and one of the first things they bring up, of course, is the roads and the condition of the roads and how bad they are. And you know, as a township resident and also a township taxpayer, I have to agree they are. They are bad. In combination with that is our, you know, our, our storm sewer system. It's not doing what it's supposed to do. And um, sometimes it's because it's deteriorating or maybe even not even in place in certain areas. So, of course, it can't take away the rainwater like it's supposed to do. <laughs> and the rain will keep coming. Oh, that's for sure. And, you know, it's one of the big contributing factors to the degrading of the roads is if the water can't get off the roads, then it sits there and, you know, our weather and our freeze-thaw cycles, um, it plays havoc on our roadways. So that water gets on, into the cracks and the roads aren't properly maintained, the water gets in the cracks and, of course, when it freezes, it's going to pop the roads and, you know, then you have all that loose asphalt that we see everywhere. Mm -hmm. 
you sound like you have a, a lifetime of experience, not only just dealing with those things, but hearing from people in the community that, that have uh, faced those problems as well. What do you think the township supervisor's role is in maybe fixing those issues or getting to a point that um, you know, they're not all of a sudden needing to be taken care of, you know, some proactive? Well, that's, that you, you hit the nail on the head. Um, for far too long, my experience has been we've always been reacting to issues as they come up. Um, in order to get out ahead of these things and get them identified, uh, we have to be proactive. And there's a lot of ways that we can do that. Um, we know the areas that um, the underground pipe is, is made of corrugated metal. There's miles of that in the township. And that's traditionally where I've been seeing issues and, and my coworkers also. That's, that's where we've been focused on going and resolving issues with uh, sinkholes in the ground. Sometimes they're in the lawns, sometimes they're under roads. Uh, you know, when they're under the roadways, that's, that can be a, a big problem, um, especially with traffic. And you don't want a sinkhole forming and all of a sudden discover, you know, that that's the issue if a car or a truck falls into it. Absolutely. Um, that can be very problematic. So to be proactive in that, we need to get out ahead of that and identify where, where are these issues. Um, we have the robotic cameras. We can get in there and, and start making that, you know, full-scale assessment of where we need to go uh, and how are we going to address these problems. Sometimes the more costly uh, fix to, say, a pipe that has failed or is failing is, is to dig it up. Um, sometimes that can be very expensive, time-consuming. Um, you have to think about all the other underground utilities that might be you know, near mm -hmm. where the storm pipes are, and that's usually the case. You have gas lines, you have water lines, electric, telephone, cable. They're, everything's underground now, especially in the newer areas. So um, in order to get around that, we can actually fix pipe while it's in place underground. Um, Disturbing less of people's neighborhoods. Oh, for sure. And, you know, just by a process called lining, you know, lining in place, cured in place lining. Um, that's usually the more cost effective approach. And ideally, that's the route we want to go, the most cost effective uh, way that we can battle this issue moving forward. Have you talked to people um, that have been facing the issue? What, what do they say? The people that live in the neighborhoods that have been, been affected, well, are I, they frustrated? Well, they're extremely frustrated. I happen to be uh, in the 26th and McKee neighborhood actually oh, yeah. last week. And I think uh, most everybody is, is aware of that issue there. It's been going on for, well, far too long. And that's the same sentiment that I'm hearing from the, from the residents in that area. It's just, um, there doesn't seem to be any forward movement and um, you know, they're, they're really not seeing any relief sure. from the issue. So they're frustrated. I was talking to one woman um, on 28th Street last week and she's nervous every time it rains. She's looking out her front window, whether it's day or night. She, she went through the Father's Day about two years ago when we had um, one of the more significant rainfalls. Um, they and uh, a lot of the neighbors up there were all affected. They're all their basements flooded. Uh, the, the stormwater runoff had nowhere to go. Sure. So it came in their homes. And that is a major concern for those folks up in that area. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, as it would be for anybody. Oh, sure. But I, sure. I can't even imagine being nervous enough that you're looking out your window every time it rains. Oh, my just, gosh. Because uh, you're that afraid of it. Right. Right. So going back to the volunteer firefighter, what, what drives you to do that? Because obviously you're a busy guy, right? You work full time, oh, yeah. <laughs> you've got a wife, three kids. What really, what made you get into being a volunteer firefighter? Well, and uh, obviously doing it well since you moved up the ranks and yeah. your commitment. Well, thank you. I, uh, you know, it's always been a, a desire of mine to, to serve the community and I can't think of a better way to do it than in that fashion. I've, uh, always had that, uh, that drive to go out and help. And, and once you join and once you, you know, receive all the training that is required and, and 
I think for a lot of people, they, most people want to rise up through the ranks and, and do better and learn more. And, um, and that's what I did. And thankfully, you know, I've had a huge amount of support from my family. My wife and my kids always have supported me. And that is, I can't even tell you how crucial that is to be successful mm -hmm. as a volunteer because you are away a lot. You're away from home a lot. Um, you know, there's the training, there's meetings, there's also the calls, mm -hmm. you know, and Sometimes. We're, Mill Creek Township is a very busy township and there's sure. a lot of calls, whether they're medical, car accidents, fires, you name it. All times of the day too. All times of the day or night. And yeah, you have to have a supportive family and very understanding. Sure. That's awesome. Yeah. It's awesome. So tell me what you've been doing on the campaign trail. Have you been going out? I, I just saw a few big signs go up. Uh, throughout the township, which is fantastic. Yeah, the campaign signs are out, obviously, large and small, uh, down to the yard signs. Um, it's been very positive. I'm anticipating um, being to at least 4,000 homes by the time Election Day comes. Do you still have souls on the bottom I of your shoes? I do have souls on, well, <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're wearing down. <laughs> but, you know, I'm, I'm meeting some fantastic people. Um, and, of course, every neighborhood's unique. And every neighborhood has, you know, something going on, whether it's their roads, it's stormwater, it's the parks near them. You know, there, there's concerns in every neighborhood. And they're looking for somebody to, to listen, to hear what they have to say. Um, and I think that that's huge. I, I know that customer service is not, uh, not highly regarded amongst a lot of folks in the township. Um, you know, dropping the ball there. We what do can you do mean by that? Better. Like the, the communication process just in general? Well, let's just start from the time that, say, you're a homeowner mm -hmm. and you have a concern. So you call in and say, I've got this going on with my street. What, what can we do about it? Sure. I'm, I'm calling to let you know about it. Well, a lot of times people never hear back. Oh, wow. They don't see any uh, result. You know, say it's a pothole in front of their home, and it goes a week, goes two weeks, and here you are, you're sitting here, well, geez, I wonder if they got, got the call. Did they get they the got, message? Did they get the message? Did they not? So you call again, and maybe it goes another week or two. Oh, wow. Now there's that frustration level, and that's totally understandable. We can do a lot better than that. Sure. Um, I've heard instances where, yeah, I'll, I'll get back to you in a week. Well, a week turned into a year, mm -hmm. and I've, I've heard that more than once, and even once is too long. Sure. That's, you know, we have to do better with, right. our, with our customer service. I, Milk Creek Township is, is, a, is a large township, but we're not too large that we can't provide great customer service, and, and I want to figure out a way to address that, address the whole process from the time somebody calls in with a with a concern or a complaint to the time it's it's rectified and you know it's there's closure to it and people shouldn't be you know sitting there wondering when's this going to get repaired when what did they say even no answer and no is a better answer than i'm sorry the answer no is better than no answer at all right, right? so okay. even if it's just a follow-up email or something but yeah i can i can understand that completely well, even, any anything else dan that you're you're thinking about that you want to close with? I know we have well, about a minute left. I can tell you, I'm, um, I'm sure you've heard of the Mill Creek Fire Commission. I've, um, I was asked to be on that as a fire commissioner. Our, our task is to um, work on the fire and EMS aspects uh, of the township and work to improve those. Uh, I've been the vice chairman since uh, the commission started and it's coming up on three years now. Um, I can tell you that we're, we're at a point now where um, we've uh, formed a task force that is going to address uh, the consolidation of the volunteer fire departments in Mill Creek into oh, one. And um, as, you're, as you may have heard, we also have a, um, a staffing issue during the day. A lot of our volunteers are working their regular jobs. and. Um, that takes away from people being able to respond. So we're, we're looking at a, a paid component so we can guarantee staffing to our 
to our residents, to our businesses in the township, so that in you know in the event of an emergency, somebody somebody will be there. Somebody will be there to respond and, and, and address the emergency. Perfect. I, I really appreciate that. And like that, we are out of time. So it was a pleasure. Well, thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you. All right.